So the topic of today morning is about how to find your purpose, how to find your goal and your purpose in this life. Okay. So very often time we find ourselves in transition, asking ourselves question, you know, what I'm going to do, what's my next step. I like this, I like this, I like this too. And I don't really know what to do. So that's the question. So the question here is um, the question about uh, your Dharma. Okay. So the term Dharma is a, a little bit complicated term to understand. Dharma means your, your, you can say your highest duty or your mm, mission yeah, in life, your mm, right thing to do. We can talk about Dharma only if we understand the word karma. Okay. So what's the reason why we do not understand our Dharma? Because we are functioning out of our karma. So we are so steep in our karma that we cannot understand our Dharma. Okay. So the level that you can get out of your karma or be detached from your karma is the level that you understand your Dharma. Okay. So, um, because, you know, people know what they like. They know what they like, but they cannot do it. They cannot fulfill it. They cannot do it. So they, they can maybe live life, you know, very frustrated. You know, always feel that they want to do something, but never can really do it. Okay? The lucky ones are those who are able to um, do it because the circumstances of life and their inner motivations meet. The two meet together then they feel fulfilled inside and outside. Okay? But you cannot blame the circumstances if the circumstances are not favorable for you to be able to express yourself and fulfill your dharma, you cannot blame the circumstances. Huh? Because it's also your karma. <laughs> so you have to work it out. Okay? Every situation is just perfect for you to work it out. Work it out. So, it might take longer time, but if you do the correct uh, practice, then you'll be able to one day fulfill your karma and dharma both together. So, how to do this? So when you are steep in the karma, then usually you, um, you are kind of in the dark, okay? Because karma means only uh, specific circumstances that you have to experience and you have to live through because of uh, the result of what you have taught and done in the past. What you have taught and done in the past have the result that you need to experience in this life. And oftentimes it can be, you know, a difficult. It can be difficult means you are struggling. You are in the dark. It's not necessarily a happy state. Sometimes you are, might be happy and then again unhappy. Happy and unhappy is not really the true picture. Because you are still trying. You're still trying to understand what is it asked from you. And then you are you trying to be happy in this life. 
uh, using your mean, using your personality, you may, using your, your skills in order to be happy, to get what you want. Sometimes you get what you want and sometimes not because you are still steep in the karma. So karma is something you have to experience and it comes from a distant past. Okay? It set up a certain circumstances of your life. Yesterday we talked about karmic relationship. That means a relationship that would um, help you eventually uh, to see who you are, which is the immortal Atman that is in everybody. And it's not the separate self that is different than everybody. So that's the karmic relationship is uh, helping you to find yourself. So now the karmic, uh, the karmic, um, you can say work, <laughs> your activity and what you find yourself doing yeah, also can be karmic. What that means? Hmm? You, you struggle with it, you try this and try that, and eventually, you know, eventually in that struggle, it helps you to know that you are not the doer. Okay? The purpose of, um, of struggling in, in work is not this, exactly the same as the purpose of struggling in relationship. In relationship is the question of love, the question of finding out that I love and serve others as my own self. So that is the truth. And the question of struggling in your activity, in your work, yeah, is to ultimately find out that actually the energy that I have, the skill that I have are not belonging to me. And I'm only the instrument in the hands of the divine. And God is the supreme doer. And this body and mind are the instrument. The moment that you'll be able to uh, understand that, then you find peace. If you have still the idea of uh, the doership, that means the I am the doing this because I want this and I like this and I don't like this, and this is um, me against the world, then at that time, you're still struggling. You are still steep in the karma, like I said in the beginning. You're still looking. You're still not finding peace yet. Okay? So therefore, it's very simple. The dharma has to start with selflessness. If you want to find your dharma, if you find to want to find your mission in life, what is the purpose of my life? Yeah, then you need to practice what we call karma yoga or the yoga of selflessness. Okay, that means in daily life you would have to um, offer, if you like yourself, yeah, to something higher and bigger and larger than yourself without condition. Acting as an instrument of something higher and feeling, and you saying, you know, I'm, I will be then abused. I will be then taken advantage of. No, it's not that. Because the, nobody can take advantage of you unless you, unless you allowed it. <laughs> because you are the one that you are the one that have the that owns your consciousness, yes or no? Yeah. So if you decided that this is what I like to do, yeah, from your end, this is what I like to do, then I offer it up consciously. Yeah, either the person take it or, or not, or want to take more. Yeah. It doesn't really matter because it comes from you. You are the one that decides that I want to offer this energy of mind, this time of mind, this skill of mind. I offer up. Yeah. This person supposed to be there is um, 
there and then I offer that to that or I offer to God in my mind. Yeah, Doesn't really matter. The main thing is you are selfless. You are working on your selflessness. When you are working on your selflessness and you have no sense of um, I own this, I own this effort, I own this, um, this work, I own this, the result. Okay, so this teaching is uh, quite deep and it's in the Bhagavad Gita, the main scripture of uh, yoga. And Swami Shivananda wrote a book on practice of karma yoga. I don't invent it. Okay? <laughs> I'm only the instrument. <laughs> I'm the karma yogi here, uh, being the instrument to convey the teaching. So don't blame me. <laughs> so the idea is, if you want to find your mission, if you want to find your highest purpose in life, uh, it's, a, it's a spiritual question. It's a very deep question. It's a spiritual question uh, because you don't know who you are. So therefore, how do you, how do you know what your soul wants? You know, your mind wants this and wants that and change you know, every, every time. Mm -hmm. So how do you know what your soul wants? Therefore, how do you know your highest purpose? How do you know your mission in life? Well, how do you know wh why you're born? Okay? It's very difficult to know. So you have to sort it out from what you can do now yeah, in terms of uh, selflessness. Whatever that you can do that is selfless, yeah, the more that you can do this, then the more your purpose will be revealed. You get that? The more that you be able to be selfless in whatever you do, in your mind, okay, independent from your circumstances, whatever your circumstances is, you still can find a way to be selfless. Yes or no? Let's say you are a mother and you can be a selfless mother. Let's say you are an employee. You can also be a selfless employee. Let's say that you are a, a teacher. You can be a selfless teacher. That means you put your heart into it and you do the best you can, and you offer the result. Now, what that means, I mean, if you are doing well, fine and good. If you're not doing well, fine and good. Um, if the company become, uh, you know, uh, successful, fine and good. If the company become bankrupt, and uh, <laughs> they, they think that it's your fault, and they fire you, it's fine and good also. Okay? But from your point of view, you practice selflessness. It's not easy to do. We said uh, yesterday, I believe, in the talk yesterday, we um, bring up the definition of Patanjali about egoism. It's very nice. I'm still really um, enjoying the meaning. Egoism is the association of the Atman with the Patanjali say the instrument of seeing uh, with the mind. Uh, we say in technical term, the antakarana, the inner instrument. So when the Atman or yourself is associating with the instrument, with what you like, what you not like, your personality, and so on, so then become egoism. So selflessness means then then detachment, yeah, detachment or non-identification with your instrument of seeing. Non-identification with your personality. Non-identification with your ego. Non-identification with your separate sense of self. Okay, so that is selflessness. So if you are able to practice that, yeah, whatever you do, and you don't think, you know, I like it, I don't like it, and this about me, and what is it that I'm going to be, um, uh, you know, what paid for, or is people going to praise me, or what do I get from this, and 
it's a waste of my time and all these thoughts. Mm -hmm. You're still functioning out of your egoism. You still function out of that tight association between your Atman and your instrument of seeing. So that's why the Karma Yoga is uh, turning it around. It says, no, no. So do whatever you need to do in front of you. Do your duty, but turn it into selflessness. Turn it into becoming the instrument. Okay? Because this is about action. It's not about not necessarily emotion, but it's about action. So therefore, you use the word instrument. I am only the instrument for this to happen. So that when you do that, you, you cancel out. Uh, if I may say, you cancel out the, the strong attachment to action. Okay? The strong attachment of the, we say the Atman or yourself towards the action and the result of action. And you, you, you detach from what you do and from the uh, result of what you do. So in that way, it works also. Karma yoga works also to liberate you. If you are able to do that, if you are able to detach from what you're doing and detach from result of action. Okay? Why Kama Yoga is being prescribed or selfless action is being prescribed by all the teachers as a starting point in their uh, journey of self-realization. Why? Because we are very much, uh, you know, uh, identifying ourselves with this separate self, this body, this mind, all our life. Uh, we are very much uh, owning this ego <laughs> or this separate individual self. Uh, so therefore, when you have to uh, keep turning it into something selfless, it's very practical. It's very practical. You can actually see it. You can see it when you work out of your own ego or you can see it when you become selfless. Okay? So it's very practical. So that's why it is, a, you see, Mark is a carpenter. Yeah? So he come here. I don't know how he comes here, but he's here. <laughs> and then his skill is being used. Yeah? Every day I remember, oh, Mark, oh, this is a project for you. This is a project for you. And then he does it. He doesn't complain. Yeah, okay, let me see. Yeah. So he's very good Kama Yogi. Yeah. People praise him. Oh, you did a good job. Thank you very much for changing all the door, the kitchen, the, all the screen now. No flies can come in and everything look good. You know, thank you very much. Oh, he, he doesn't care. <laughs> he, he do it and he does a good job. Yeah. And um, so... So this is a Kama Yogi attitude, you know, the attitude of selflessness. So he, he, you know, without him knowing, he gained some, um, uh, some, um, some points, you can say, huh? some punya, uh, some merits, okay? And uh, what he's going to do with the merits, you know, the same skill, he can go and do some work somewhere else and get, you know, pay. Get pay for it because you know, as a carpenter, a skilled carpenter, you get you get paid for your job. Okay, here what he has, he has some food. <laughs> he has some food, and then um, <laughs> you know, a bed to sleep on, <laughs> and so on. Yeah, but he gets something that you cannot find. You know. Uh, elsewhere, yeah, he get what Swamiji called the punya and yeah? the merit, the merit of the points that go in your bank account, yeah, of your progress in life. Um, it is said when you when you die, you know, there is a Chitra Gupta, <laughs> the accountant of heaven. 
he's waiting for you. <laughs> and when you go there, this is the Indian theory, okay? Uh, in the Western theory, there's maybe some other name, but the Chitra Gupta is waiting for you for the big register. <laughs> he, because he's taking account, you know? Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And you say, well, okay, that's your balance. <laughs> Okay, you can go here, you can go there. That means your consciousness at that time, you know, you don't have the body, you don't have to do anything. And your consciousness at that time would be elevated to go to this level or that level. Yeah? And depends, and then you enjoy. In the you know, life after life, you enjoy according to your merit. And then you, you stay there until when you finish your, your credit. It's like a, uh, you go to heaven or you book in a, not heaven, you go, you book in a five star hotel with a credit card. Yeah, with a credit limit. Okay. So you can stay in a five star hotel as far as your credit is still work. But your credit finished, then sorry, bye bye. You have to go back and work again to put more money in the credit. That's how it works. Yeah? And then you have to, be reborn on earth and when you'll be reborn on earth you would uh, have the chance the opportunity to earn points <laughs> to earn more merits okay or to have more uh, debit uh, they have more debts okay so to find your purpose in life you need to practice selflessness after you practice selflessness, and then it will be revealed to you. Okay? So, um, I don't know. Yeah, Mark, he, he do the carpentry to, for the ashram. Because he has a skill. It's called your karma. He has a skill. And then, um, but he offered it up. Uh, and then he might find his dharma one day. Okay? He will be so happy yeah, to do this. And then maybe he will open a carpentry school for a young, uh, young, young man or young woman, you know, and uh, to teach them skills yeah, to, um, to, uh, to make a living. Yeah. He teach them skills to make a living, but he does it in a selfless manner to uplift the young people. So he found his dharma. Bingo. See, it's like this. So there is a story of an Indian woman. I forgot her name. I'm sorry to forget her name because she's a kind of um, famous, not famous like this um, Mother Teresa, who is uh, quite selfless. But uh, this Indian woman, she told a story. It's a really heart-wrenching story. She was uh, abused when she was young, uh, physically. And so she was uh, thrown out in the, in the street. And then she has to... Um, what is the story? What's the name of the woman? Because you can look up. Yeah. And then she... Um, She went through quite a hard time, okay? And um, she has to do a very bad job. And she was also um, not only abused by the family, but also abused by the husband. And the whole story is very long. And then she decided to open a institution. And she gathered the, 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 the girls in the street, yeah, and she started to open a home for uh, girls that are abundant in the street. Exactly her condition. She was abundant in the street, and she opened a home, and she gathered one case, two case, and she adopted all these women that been abundant in the street and been abused. And then she has her institution become so big, yeah, and she become. Um, um, you know, really very powerful uh, force, okay, to help this woman. 
So she told her story. It was in the internet. I, I saw that in the internet. I don't remember her name. So it's like that. So it's called her karma, is it not? Her karma being thrown in the street and then be uh, abused. Yeah. And then she turned that karma into her dharma. So that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So whatever happened to you, uh, you can turn it around and you serve exactly with what you know well from your karma uh, and you, you turn around and you serve. At that time, you find your mission, your unique mission. Because God has given you the situation. Yeah, it might be difficult because you are still, you know, did not know. But that particular situation is your strength. So therefore, you turn it around and you serve. And then that will be your stepping stone for liberation. Yeah, when you become selfless. The moment that you become selfless, you detach yourself. Yeah, from whatever this life is about, whatever this personality is about, whatever this uh, feeling is about, and then you are free. So that's it. Okay. So that's why everyone is is um, yearning toward finding their dharma uh, because they feel, you know, I live my life, I do, go to work, I get the money, I can do what I want, but you know, I don't feel fulfilled. I feel that I have a, something to contribute to society. I feel that I, I want to be somebody. Uh, I want to have a purpose in my life. Okay? So you would, um, that's all. The formula is whatever you have, serve with that. Start with that. Yeah? If you know how you have the skill, how to sew, okay? And um, so, okay, let's say in the COVID time, you are not a nurse, you're not a doctor to help people. Fine and good, you know how to sew. Okay, so you can sew a uh, mask. <laughs> and then you, you, you donate, you ship to other people and you donate. Yeah, that's also your contribution. Yeah. Then uh, eventually you start with this act and eventually you might, um, you know, find your mission. Okay. Any question here? Huh? Mm, I don't know. You need to hear her story to recognize her story. Mm. Mm, okay. Anything else in the chat? Any question there in the chat? So Gandhiji, Mahatma Gandhi, he was a lawyer. You know what means a lawyer? He knows how to argue. <laughs> so he was a lawyer. And then he, he used that skill that he has. Yeah selflessly and he found his mission uh, somehow to um, eventually he, he he helped the liberation of uh, india yeah from uh, colonialism so and his name now people still talk about it but he's offer his skill okay what skill you have? You start like that. Whatever the skill that you have, or whatever you you struggle with, or whatever you are strong with, yeah. So, oh yeah, Mahalakshmi. Mahalakshmi, she's uh, doing uh, now what they call good karma diet. Uh, you know what that, that means. So yeah, she has a skill. She has seven planets in the second house, so she has a skill of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so she cooked very well yeah? and then she turned it around and she teach people cooking yeah? and then she get the proceed from that and she wanted to help the animals and then she asked if I can cook here and then 
get the proceeds and offer to the animal sanctuary that uh, gathered these uh, animals that have been mistreated or abandoned. And then she gave the proceeds to the animal uh, sanctuary. Okay, So that's, uh, that's also, and then eventually, I think I'm the one that tell you to cook. In the beginning, she doesn't know how to cook. Yeah, I tell her how to cook. And then she, she learned how to cook. She tried it on me <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> you know, one dish, two dish. And then after she try and try, and then you know, she might find her mission in life, which is how to teach people how to cook vegetarian food and not to harm the animal and help the ecology and then open up to something else and something else. You know, so it sounds it sound like this with something very innocent. Yeah. And then, you know, somehow it, it comes to you, this, this skill and this intelligence start to come to you because the moment that you start to find that connection with yourself and your contribution to society and um, you do it selflessly, then the door open. You feel better and better when you do that. Mm -hmm. Who else? One example else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it a question? Is it a question? Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole lecture. <laughs> Our Dharma is to achieve self realization. Self realization would not be achieved if you have the ego, you function out of your ego. That means your Atman, which is yourself, that you want to realize, is always associated with this body and mind, this likes and dislikes, this personality. So when you offer this personality and this skill and this energy, this identification with your separate self, off or up, you, know, you offer up, yeah, then at that time you slowly detach. You detach from that identification yeah, of the idea of you think who you are, and then you detach slowly in a practical manner, okay? And then you, it dawns to you, uh, you realize yourself. Because the self is always there, but our mind is uh, obstructing, our ego of our false self is obstructing, that's why you need to work on that uh, se separation yeah, between the Atman and the mind, ego, by detachment and by offering it up. Because if you work and then you want people to praise you or you want some result, then it gets you linked again, the Atman, uh, to the mind. You understand? So the mind likes something and wants the result from that. The mind owns this life. Yeah? The ego owns this life and wants people to recognize you for that. And that would make you, instead of going toward liberation, it makes you going more toward um, being in bondage, being uh, tied to this personality. And then you, you get so worried and anxious and then you, you cannot sleep because, you know, you think that you don't gain what you want. And so you are very much concerned about what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, you can get yourself sick. Yeah? So many people get sick out of, you know, worrying about, you know, their performance. But um, if you, you do everything in, the spirit of karma yoga, then it's okay. You do the best you can. You do your duty. You do the best you can. You offer the result. 
you know, so it doesn't really matter. So then you sleep well, you work hard, yeah, but the energy comes from heaven because it comes from your soul. It comes from your Atman, that is a source of everything because you do it selflessly. So therefore, the Atman will make sure that you have the energy to do whatever it is that is needed. Yeah. And then, um, and then you, you are free. Yeah? There's a light feeling to it. There's a happy feeling. There's a light feeling to it. Yeah? If you experience it, then it's like uh, you will just want more. Uh, you want more of this light feeling. And you don't want this feeling of worry, your feeling of you know, heaviness, you know, the feeling of uh, winning and losing, the feeling of better than another person or worse than another person. There's comparison, there's the feeling that you are never good enough, yeah, uh, and, and the, the concerns about the ego. Concerns about the ego really make you suffer because always you're never enough. You can work hard, you can do everything, and but you're never enough. You're never perfect. Uh, you're not. You if you do something, it's never perfect. And if somebody come and they destroy your work, and you are also angry, upset, you know, and then you are competing all the time with other people, yeah. And uh, it takes all the joy out of life, yeah. But life is meant to be living joyfully. And when you are selfless, you are uh, uh, joyful. But if you do karma yoga and you are unhappy, because some people say, I do karma yoga and I'm unhappy. Uh, it is because your, your ego is doing karma yoga, but your, your spirit are not embracing yet the the uh, selfless attitude of a karma yogi, okay? So it doesn't mean that you you uh, you come to an ashram, you know, and you are not being paid that you are doing karma yoga. It's not true, okay? Because it's in the spirit, okay? So, and there's that spirit of karma yoga has to be built up uh, for a long time because who, who wants to be uh, selfless? Who wants to be selfless? Nobody wants to be selfless. <laughs> yeah? We are not uh, trained to be selfless, what I'm saying. Yeah? We're not trained to be selfless. Okay? We like to, um, to be selfless, but it's not necessary that we can cope with the, the, the practice of selflessness well. Yeah? Uh, Sometimes we, uh, we are selfless, Yes, and sometimes we are not selfless, so that we complain. So in the process, you know, you sometimes you gain a lot out of this, like what I said, and sometimes you feel, ah, oh, I don't like it, you know. I've been, uh, I come here, I thought I learned something, and then I do dishes all day long. You know, I could do dishes at home. You know, I come here, I do dishes. You know, <laughs> you know, and then I just start to complain and then blame, you know, this cook, you know, they cook and they don't do their own dishes. They make me do their dishes. And then you say, or you look around and you say, this person, they're not doing dishes. They're just uh, only sweeping, uh, you know, cutting flowers. They have such a nice karma yoga and they make me do dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so you complain, okay? So that's normal, okay? That's normal that in the practice of karma yoga, you uh, don't feel, like I say, that unbounded joy. I'm telling you that it's, you know, it's joyful, but you had to practice long enough to find the joy. <laughs> Before that, a lot of complain. <laughs> Okay, so uh, don't say that I'm sitting here and I talk to you just like that, okay? I have been a karma yogi more than 40 years because before that, I was social worker and, and I also have to do this selfless work, you know? Uh, that's part of, of my, my, uh, 
my profession, you can say, because people pay me to be doing social work. I have big pay, yeah. But uh, then I do selfless work at home on my free time without pay. <laughs> so I'm full time. I'm, I'm at work, you know. But I receive the pay, which the pay I give to my uh, family, and then the time that I gave, you know, I dedicated uh, to help other people are not paid. Okay? So then eventually I I quit. I quit that portion being paid. <laughs> so then I retained the portion of not being paid. So then I become a full-time not being paid uh, 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 servant. Um, um, a worker, okay, and then the the older skill that I have learned, you know, I use it. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's not coming easily, even though, you know, it's a important uh, first yoga path. And we need to learn from. But I can guarantee with you that after some time, if you do it, you know, one or two years, you 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 start to like it. Okay, but you'll be surprised. You know, you know, we um, offer to people to come and do seva study here. That means study half and then work half. And then in the application form, we ask people uh, to, what is karma yoga? To describe what is karma yoga. Because we want people to know what they enter into. Yeah? So they don't come here and then feel that they are being exploited or something. So we ask people in the application form to write down what their feeling of karma yoga. And it's amazing answer. Okay, I asked Swami Dhammananda to collect this, uh, the, these answers of people and make a book out of that. You know, it's true. Yeah, and you have not finished yet. You know? Huh? You're just starting the book now. So please start the book of uh, the practice of Kama Yoga. You know, how people come up with some extraordinary uh, sentences that they say in their application form, before they do Kama Yoga, before coming here, they already have an idea, you see? So to say that people are, are selfish, you know, in the beginning, it's not exactly correct. It's not exactly correct. Actually, I was surprised yeah, to see that people know what is selflessness, they crave for selflessness, they want to come, many people want to come writing specifically, you know, I want to come to practice selflessness. It's quite amazing. Okay, so start the book and finish the book. Okay? <laughs> because the ashram is made out of this karma yoga uh, energy of uh, people. Okay? So I have a lot of gratitude. You know, I sit here Whatever I look, it's always I remember, like pop up a face of somebody, you know, because that's what they do. They, they come here and they offer their skill. I, this floor here, I've, I've seen in my mind, yeah, all these people crawling on the floor and do this floor. Yeah, there's a wall, <coughs> wood wall there. Yeah, I still remember there's this girl that is not a carpenter. But somehow, you know, we have a deadline. So she become a carpenter. You know, she fixed this low wall, this wooden wall behind. Yeah. And um, every every bit of it yeah, is so beautiful. That's why the ashram is beautiful. Not because, um, you know, the building. The building is just normal. There's many better buildings than the, the building of the ashram. But there is an energy, the karma yogi put in you know, when they do the work because everything is built out of karma yoga and when I come here you know there's only a, all 
a farmhouse and there is no money, yeah, and and how did the ashram build up? Yeah, from the sweat and the effort and the love of the karma yogis. Okay, I remember one girl. Is that something I feel? I still remember that case. I feel in debt. You know all these cases. The one girl she come from Europe. I I forget now. She uh, she's uh, from England or she's from Germany. I'm not sure. At that time, many people come from Europe here. And then this girl, young girl, I said maybe 25. Yeah, she come in uh, just for a short period of time, like something two weeks. Uh, as again, as again, not even as a karma yogi. And then she come here, and at that exact moment when she come, yeah, we dig the floor of the farmhouse, yeah, because the farmhouse, old farmhouse, is sitting on no foundation, yeah, and then the floor is like, mm. so, <laughs> so we have to dig in the ground through the wooden floor, and then. Uh, uh, put the um, post, okay, and the cement. We have to cement the post to uh, support the floor, okay. So the this girl come from, you know, very innocent. She's traveling or whatever. Yeah, she come here just for two weeks. She come at that moment. <laughs> so I remember she spent the whole time that she's here, you know, in the basement. <laughs> In the half low basement, and then you know, we all are there to um, how do you say that to bring the cement because the cement cannot come right there, you know. So then you have to with the wheelbarrow, you know, to fill up the cement, and then you have to wheelbarrow it in, and then you have to somehow with bucket or something bring it down to a person underneath, and they had to pull the cement concrete floor in the basement. So it, uh, it takes a longer time than we thought. And uh, so this girl spent her time in the basement and doing cement work. And she's happy. Yeah. Because we don't force people to do things. Yeah, they're happy to do. And they like them to continue to do. And we let them do. And she's happy and she's grateful when she left. And I'm grateful for my life, for her, for doing this. Because it's tough. It's a tough job, you know, and she's willing to do it. It's not an easy thing. So I can, I write a book. <laughs> One day I will write a book. Of all the karma yogis that have come through here. Yeah. Because they have done incredible uh, work and very, um, you know, um, all kinds, all kinds of people, okay? There's also other people that are angry, that come here, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah, I still remember this man that is uh, really disliking this girl, because the girl is a very bhakti, you know, very devotional. So there's a young girl, always very devotional. She walk around with the flowers, <laughs> like this. And this man, it's irritated him. Yeah, and he's a he's a carpenter. So one day he swing a chair <laughs> toward the girl. I mean, <laughs> that also is karma yoga. So. <laughs> Okay, so it's not all uh, rosy, rosy, yeah, but it's still one of the most important uh, path toward karma yoga, uh, toward uh, knowing oneself and be free from your karma. If you don't do this, fine and good, you live your life and your karma would um, torture you, okay? Because karma is never nice, it always comes as a contradiction, as a disillusion, as a, you know, unfulfilled feeling, and, you know, you'll be tortured by your karma anyway, 
If you want to get out of your karma, then you can try a baby step how to become selfless. Hare Om Tat Sat. Oh.